Morning, Dad. Morning, Fabio. <laughs> Hair is looking good today. Um, all right. Who's? Yours. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Long as shit, but it's looking good. Now I have to bleep that out. You don't have to. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Longer than it should be. There we go. That's yeah. what I like to hear. Yeah. All right, so here's the deal. Here's something that I wanted to uh, to get your insight on today. Mm-hmm. Employee pricing. Yeah. So last month in particular, I saw a lot of, I think it was like for Chrysler and Jeep and, and actually for all the Chrysler brands, it was like employee pricing for all. And we see that year over year. We see employee pricing and, you know, you don't pay more than our employees, et cetera, et cetera. You were an employee of a dealership, Acura, Audi, Mercedes-Benz for a little period of time. I mean, across the board, right? Yeah. Nissan. Yeah. Can you actually explain to us? Oh, Mini. Of course, you have your Mini. Yeah. Can you explain to us what employee pricing actually is and if it's employee pricing? And what is employee pricing? There's a lot to unpack there, Hanson. Could, could you get maybe a fourth or a fifth question rolled into that one question? What's for lunch? <laughs> yeah. Well, employee pricing varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. Some manufacturers support um, employees of dealerships driving their brand much more so than others do. When I was with Acura, um, Acura didn't really have any employee pricing programs. Hmm. Now, I I was with the Penske organization, and uh, at that time, sales managers had demos we were allowed demos and then unfortunately there were a number of sales managers who were involved in automobile accidents and the Penske organization thought it was best to do away with demos and managers were given a an allotment for a car on a monthly basis and maybe just for our audience what's a demo because I don't know if everyone knows what a A, demo demo is is uh, a sales manager's vehicle to use uh, for transportation to and from work. So it's like part of your compensation package is you get a car. Yeah, and it's considered compensation and it's taxable. Is it really? Yeah, it is. Didn't used to be. In the, in the old, 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 old days when I first started, yeah, demos were free and there were no tax liabilities. And, and then the government said, well, but they have value. Yeah, which they do. They do. So that should be taxed. So then they became a taxable item. Okay. Um, So a demonstrator is a vehicle that that dealership employees get to use so they can get to and from work. Uh, And if they have a a special dispensation, they can, if they can ask and see if they can use it to go on their vacation, a trip or wherever they're going. Um, And the company picks up the the insurance and the maintenance and the and in some cases, even the gasoline. Okay. Um, So that that was a demonstrator. And then, like the Penske organization did away with those, so a sales manager was given a five hundred dollar a month stipend towards a car, and and they could buy any car that was sold within the Penske organization, and in, in my case, that was in Arizona, because um, that's where we were at the time. We could buy any car from any of their dealerships at what's known as triple net, which was invoice less hold back less any other incentives so that we could literally buy it for cost and that was the deal and then we could we could either finance it or lease it um i remember there was one time i had ordered a new mdx and i think uh, msrp on the car was like forty two thousand dollars and i think we could have bought it for like 37 something like that and then then we had a a certified pre-owned service loaner Mm -hmm. that had 5,000 miles on it and by being certified well that meant it actually had more warranty than the brand new car and that car because it was a certified service loaner still qualified for all the new car um, incentives at the time so I was able to buy that car um, at triple net, less any factory incentives. So I got a car with a little over 5,000 miles uh, that would have had an MSRP of over $42,000. I I got that car for $31,500. So that was employee pricing from the corporation that I worked for. Acura 
as a brand didn't have employee pricing for dealership employees. Now, BMW, Mercedes, Audi, Mini, a lot of the brands have real honest-to-God employee pricing. When GM or Chrysler does employee pricing, then that's pricing that's set by the manufacturer. If you're, a, if you're an employee of uh, GM, either at one of their uh, uh, facilities where they manufacture the vehicles or corporately, uh, then, then the pricing is structured based on what, whatever the manufacturer has set up to be the employee pricing. And then typically once a year, they'll do that for anybody that comes in because it's just a way for them to move extra cars. They're not making any real profit on those cars. And the dealer might get a 250 or a $500 uh, fee from the manufacturer for delivering the car. It's less than what a dealer would typically make, uh, but it, it gives the dealer something and it increases the volume. And, and it leads to the dealer being able to make their volume bonuses that the manufacturer had said, because they count. So, so you're saying like for General Motors, for example, when they do employee pricing, that actually is employee, employee pricing. pricing. Yeah. Now, when, you, when we talk about brands like BMW or Mini or things like that, yeah. if they do employee pricing, is that actually employee pricing? Or I guess it's Yeah, the general public can't get these prices. For instance, yeah. at, at Mini, um, the way it works... Um, is unless it's a JCW, John Cooper Works package, um, the vehicle is invoice. You pay no more than in what what the dealership was invoiced for the car. Less seventeen hundred and fifty dollars. That's the incentive that Mini uh, gives to the dealership personnel. That's the employee pricing. Yes. Gotcha. On their models, plus you qualify for any employee incentives that are going on at the time. So if there's $1,500 employee, a $1,500 regular incentive for a customer, you get $1,750 plus $1,500. So you're $3,250 behind invoice, whatever the invoice cost was on the car. If it's a JD, JCW, it's a $2,000 incentive. Mm -hmm. And some of the other uh, benefits of it are if you're leasing it or financing it, they can't mark up the, the uh, buy rate at all. Hmm. If it's a lease, they waive the uh, lease um, acquisition fee. Uh, but you still qualify and still get the gap insurance. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a previous mini owner or BMW owner, you get loyalty on top of it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, f my, I think my my clubman was I don't know forty two and change, forty two eight something like that, and uh, I believe that I paid thirty four. And that. And so that employee pricing wasn't from the corporation that you work for. No, that it, was, that, that's, it was from the manufacturer. It's from the manufacturer. On the BMW side of things, the, the uh, incentive uh, for an employee purchase is based on the model car that you're looking at. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it could be upwards of five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 for the employee incentive to buy one of those cars. So generally speaking, if you see employee pricing promotions, they're yeah. actually pretty good they might not be triple net like you were talking about actually they yeah. won't be triple net like you you were talking yeah. about but they're still you know, decent they're, promotions you no know, they're, they're you know it's, it's true employee pricing but it's not going to be those those type of things normally aren't offered on mercedes benz or audi or or bmw uh, they're they're typically offered on the domestic brands chrysler um gm ford things like that yeah, 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 I've seen a lot of them for the Chrysler brands, yeah. um, and it's just it's just an effort for the manufacturer to be able to move more units in that given time frame that they're running that promotion. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, and it allows the uh, it allows the dealer to hit their their sales objectives that have been uh, set up by the manufacturer because yeah. those deals count. Yeah, no, do deals that if the dealership sells a car to an employee does that count as well? What do you mean? Like towards the monthly goal for the factory incentive? Yes. Like like my my purchase or my lease, yeah, counted towards their sales objective for that month. Do dealerships ever sell cars to themselves? 
What do you mean by that? Like, <laughs> like I guess I'm wondering if you've got, I don't know, $100,000 bonus coming up at the end of the month and you need like two more car sales to hit it. Can dealerships sell cars to themselves? To their own leasing company? Yeah, sure. like stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. But they have to have set up a, a legitimate leasing company in order to be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes the manufacturer might encourage them to put cars in into their service loaner fleet. That Which counts might, as moving that, a unit. That, that, that would count as moving a unit that would put them closer to their objective. That, that's one thing that uh, some of the manufacturers do quite a bit. You, you and I were talking the other night um, about contests because someone had left a comment about um, about contests that, that uh, manufacturers would promote to, to move vehicles and then dealerships getting audited after the fact. For, yes. So yes. so I think on this like employee pricing side or selling cars to employees or even you know just selling cars in general, there are all sorts of, they're not gray areas, but opportunities for dealerships to... Finagle? Finagle. Well, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I know... Uh, when I ran an Acura dealership in Arizona, and I would assure my area vice president, I said, I'm pretty certain that I outsold our competitor this month, but I might not have out RDR'd them. And an RDR stands for Retail Delivery Report. When you sell a car, you have to report it to the manufacturer that you sold it and, and the customer's name and the date that they bought it and all that neat stuff. And the reason I was pretty certain that I couldn't out RDR them some months is occasionally we would do a dealer trade where they had a car that I needed for my customer and they would trade it to me. And when I went to report that car as a sold unit, well, lo and behold, it had already been reported by them. Um, and then I remember one day, uh, this was in the Phoenix metro area, and they, they sent in their audit team, and they audited that store, my the competitor store, first. And what they do is they take 100 deals, and they go through 100 deals, and, and they extrapolate from how many they find that, well, weren't legitimate, and then they assess you a fine um, where you have to pay back the money that you got. And a lot of dealers were okay with that because they... they the manufacturer wouldn't charge them interest. Uh, they just made them pay back the money that they shouldn't have received. And I believe that, I don't know, the check that the dealership had to write was upwards of $300,000. Wow. And, and the sales manager, who I used to always compete against, I don't know, was suddenly unemployed. Now, when they came and they did our store... And they took the 100 deals, and they audited the 100 deals, and I think they found one error, and 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 they said, well, that's nothing. You don't owe us anything. Um, I don't know. I still had a job at the end of the <laughs> audit. So it, to me, it just made more sense when you sold the car, you reported the car. If you didn't sell the car, you don't report the car. It's pretty simple. Yeah. No, but it's kind of interesting like for someone who hasn't worked in a dealership to know yeah, if you sell a car to one of your employees, well, of course well, it if, counts. Yeah, if you're if you're a corporate store and you're part of a, like the Penske organization, which is a publicly traded company, well, I don't know how to break it to you, but if dealerships are reporting cars sold that aren't sold, well, that's fraud, okay? And that, that can help manipulate stock prices because Penske would be able to say they're selling more cars than they actually sold. Yeah. And, and they frown upon that. They don't want you playing well, those games. Maybe we could do a whole video on dealerships moving cars to uh, to their service loaner fleets because that's that, different. That, but that kind of is gaming the system. Well, no that 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 is gaming the system that is encouraged and underwritten by the manufacturer. It still doesn't make Say, it right. I agree with you. I, I can tell you, having been with BMW and Mini, you know, every month they go, well, why don't you put eight cars in service loaner fleet? Well, you know, eventually these cars have to come out of service loaner fleet, and you have more service loaners with four to 5,000 miles on them than you do new cars. Yeah. And, you know, at, at a certain point, you have to sell those cars. Um, but yeah, they, you know, because they were always in competition with Mercedes Benz to say, well, we're the number one selling Volume, luxury yeah. brand, you know, so, you know, dealers are putting cars in their service loaner fleets and they end up with these bloated service loaner fleets. Um, but that was something that the factory paid the dealers to do it. Leave a comment down below if you're interested to learn more about that. Uh, I think it's really fascinating, but I don't know if our audience will. I just think it's so neat, the smoke and mirrors. Because these are all, I mean, like Daimler and, and BMW. They all do it. But they're, they're, they're publicly traded companies. So it's like they, 
they report quarterly and if they have bad numbers which we've talked about in previous videos yeah. you know if they have bad numbers it can you know sink stock prices bad numbers bad 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 numbers you can't have that you can't have honesty can't have that's another shirt <laughs> yeah 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 we could do the truth is the truth and god damn it you can't have honesty <laughs> Okay, if you're looking for honesty in this industry, well, you're looking in the wrong place. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, I guess on that note, employee pricing, if there are promotions around it, give it a shot. Look yes. into it. It's not triple net. Triple net's super cool. Glad that I've always had you on by my side to help me buy cars. Um, not trying to make anyone jealous. It's just my dad. So I'm, yeah. I'm lucky. Yeah. And, uh, and let us know if you want to hear more stories about, you know, yeah, maybe like the auditing or how these uh, promotions work from the dealership perspective. Well, I, I, we did get a, a comment from somebody that actually had worked for one of the major manufacturers and said that on an annualized basis, they paid out over $600 million to their dealer network in incentive money based on these contests. And well, you know, when there's $600 million involved, there's, there's a good reason to have an audit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But what's what's good for a major manufacturer might not necessarily be good for the, for the U.S. government, but... You know, we're, we're just talking trillions of dollars there. <laughs> Don't you worry about a thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, should we do an outro? Yeah, I think uh, we're done. I think uh, we're good. Yeah, folks, I think we're done for the day. Uh, with any luck at all, we can get this uploaded. And, well, <laughs> if we're feeling up to it, we'll do something again tomorrow. We promise. I don't think I've ever had an issue uploading it. Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> Say goodbye, Zach. Goodbye, folks. <laughs>